Layton and Luke learn much about the Herzen family from the museum and a recovered miner's log. This new information reveals several baffling facts. Driving to discover the truth about the Elysium box in full sense, the two set out for Herzen Castle. Good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box. Let's just get things started. Ooh, this place looks really pretty. Uh, if I'd known this was here, I might have used this as the extra image in the top right corner. Okay. Burr, when did it get so chilly? Indeed, it's so cold out here that the lake has frozen over. Oh, I have an idea for a shortcut. Puzzle well, number 126, Slippery Crossings 1. The lake in front of the professor has frozen solid. The ice is thick enough to stand on, but it is so slippery that any movement in any direction causes him to slide uncontrollably in that direction until he hits a wall. When straight when stationary, you can change the professor's direction by tapping the arrows around him. Can you guide the professor through this slippery lake to the goal? Oh, we have, actually have a little Leighton down there who's going to be sliding around. It's like a RPG ice uh, dungeon. Hit number one. When you hit your first wall, head right. Hint number two, after heading right as the described in hint one, you'll hit another wall. Don't try to head up to the goal from there. Hint number three, in order to enter the goal, you must first stop in a position directly below it. There are two short walls lining the path that leads straight up to the goal. Take the professor on a course that leads him straight into the rightmost part of the two walls. I like the little victory picture that we have at the end right here. Um, So right now we're going to move Layton up to the top. And to the right, like they mentioned before. Uh, that's what I do, right? Slide up, slide down. Okay, they don't want me to go up and then right. They want me to go up and then down. Because now I have these options available to me. Okay. Slide to the right, slide to the right, and then up. Jump up this time, slide to the right, and that's it. This should do the trick. I like to imagine Layton doing those poses as he's skating, skating across the ice. He's just like, yes, this is fine. Woo, but that was super slippery. You can't stop now. Oh, no. Our crossing went as well as could be hoped for, but we can't stop here. Off we go. Uh, did we actually cross to another side? I guess we did. Cool. And that was... Jesus Christ, Sulu. So stinking creepy. Get that. Get a very inconspicuous puzzle. Whoa! Watch your step here, Professor! It's nothing but ice! There's no snow for us to walk on here, so we need to tread carefully. Here it goes. Gee, I wonder what this is. 127 Slippery Crossings 2. Second verse, same as the first. Okay. Hint number one. At the first wall you come to, head left. Hint number two. Your next move should be to head up toward the top of the screen. Hint number three. Don't get impatient while you're out there skating around. It may take you the equivalent of two or of two laps around the lake to get where you need to be. The solution is to slide up, then down, then right, then up. Up, then down, then right, then up. And then left, down, right, down. Left, down, right, down. And then right and up. Very good. Just leave it to me. Oh, they're taking turns solving Maybe the ice the puzzles. But oh, there's still one more after this, so one of them will have to fight for the final one. I feel like we're get, you're just getting the hang of these puzzles. Well, just the same. If you ever come across a frozen lake in real life, be sure to keep off it. Those things are dangerous. <laughs> Well done. It's a miracle we both made it across without taking a tumble. I sense we're getting close, Luke. Let's keep moving. Uh, we actually are moving to different areas. And here we are facing another frozen lake. It appears to be the only way across, so here we go. And now we do Slippery Crossings 3. Uh, hint number one. Hang a right at the first wall you bump into. Hint number two. The number of walls might make this puzzle seem daunting, but think of it this way. The greater number of barriers in your path, the more options you have to work with. Always think ahead of your current position on the ice to narrow down the possibilities. Hint number three. 
In order to enter the goal, you must first stop in a position directly below it, but considering the complicated nature of the course, you might have more luck starting from your goal and working your way backward. Do that, and you'll soon see that you need to position the professor three spaces below the goal in order to reach it. Solution is up, right, up, left. Sounds like a Rhythm Heaven game. Up, right, up, left. That's not left. Thankfully, it's not counting how many... Uh, spaces I do it in so I could just keep on going down left down right down left down right down right up left down right up left and then up Lane gets the final one because he's the best huh wonderful Excellent. Be glad the professor isn't a champion ice skater. Sure, he'd have an easier time moving around on the ice, but then you'd be out a puzzle because of it. I like the sneaker descriptions for some of these. These are really funny. We made it across. Now we've just a short distance to left to cover and we'll be there. That's the last one of those types of puzzles. But yeah, we actually went through three different screens. So uh, let's go back a bit. Wait, we didn't go through all these different screens? Huh. Those were just different icicles that kept on popping up if you wanted another ice puzzle. That's a weird way of doing it. So here we just go up one time, and we're here. Jackpot. Way to ruin the ambience, Sulu. Uh, anything else around here? Wow, not anything. Guess we're just gonna go forward. Um, Professor, are you sure it's safe to cross this thing? It looks a bit rickety. Safe enough, I believe. Are you frightened, Luke? A little, yes. I mean, just look. If I fell, that'd be the end of me for sure. Now, Luke, it may seem scary, but if you stay calm and keep moving forward, you'll be just fine. Here, try this puzzle. It will help take your mind off a little trip across the chasm. Layton, you are the stinking best. Puzzle number 100, a rickety bridge. How is a puzzle about a rickety bridge going to get his mind off of the rickety bridge? Luke and Professor Layton stand at one end of the rickety old bridge. Afraid of falling into the chasm below, Luke's legs have become stiff with fear and he can only walk across the bridge in increments of one or three planks at a time. The narrowness of the bridge prevents Luke from doubling back the way he came or switching the foot he's using to, uh, he's using to step forward while standing on it. Use your stylus to create a path that guides Luke safely across the bridge while avoiding any gaps in the planks. That bridge looks terrifying, my god. Hint number one. The first step Luke's, Luke takes with his is with his left foot. Hint number two. The last step Luke takes is with his right foot. It carries him a distance or of one plank. Hint number three. Luke's ninth step carries him to the goal. So the solution is... Huh. The solution is huh. Do that. And that. Uh, this is weird. Um. Did it work? I'm at the goal. You can't. Uh, do that. Then that. That jump over here, jump down. At least it didn't like fail me for getting to the end. It was like, nope, you didn't do it right. There we go. Consider this puzzle solved. A true gentleman leaves no puzzle unsolved. That was some fancy footwork. The ninth step you choose takes Luke to the goal. Make sure that your last step. You put him down on loot. Oh, whatever, I don't care. Well, I suppose I feel a little better, but this bridge still makes me nervous. Yeah, this bridge looks stinking terrifying. And, wow, there's like a whole city beneath the castle, which looks really cool. Or maybe, like, we came around and stuff, and, like, that's full sense from below. These are areas that we've already visited. Looks really cool. I mean, to examine that. The Hersons should be should have invested a little of that legendary wealth into repairing this rioty bridge. Okay, get that one. And one more possibly. 
God diggity darn it. Uh, we got nothing. Oh, something. Yay, hooray. Yay, yay, hooray. Happy day. Wow, this place is even creepier looking up close. Feeling nervous again, are you? Not in the slightest. Let's go, Professor. Yeah, somebody help me. What seems to be the problem, sir? There's a vampire in that castle. I thought it was a goner, but I managed to give him the slip. A real vampire? I didn't stick around to check his fangs, sonny boy. I've got to get away from here. Ah! So what do you think all this vampire business is about now, Professor? The rumor it does seem to have spread throughout the population of full sense. Well, do you think maybe it could be, you know, more than a rumor? That's what we're here to find out. Just a few more steps and we'll find our answer ourselves. And I guess... Well, we're not going to end the episode here. It's only 11 minutes, but that might be the end of Chapter 6. Chapter 7, an encounter at the end of the line. This is the final chapter. Kind of an anticlimactic way of presenting it, but there you go. Also a very anticlimactic way of starting the final chapter, but we apparently didn't miss a single puzzle, which is nice. Uh, we might be heading to a point of no return, but I assume the game will tell us about it beforehand, so for now we're just going to keep on going. I really wish we had all the pieces of the camera. We're supposed to have 11. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We have 10 pieces. So... We're not quite there yet. Just open up those. I'm getting iffy about this camera, like, do we, is there really only, there are 11, not 10? Oh my Christ, there are only 10. The first tab on here is how to repair the camera. I kept on counting it in the list as an actual part. Wow, okay, Jesus Christ. Uh, so I guess we're repairing the camera now. Step one, put this here. Oh my god, I'm stupid. Sorry to anyone who's like standing and yelling at me in the comments, be like, why did you repair the camera? Uh, put that there. Uh, this is like a puzzle in its own. Uh, I think they're in order of like stuff. Uh, is that the right one? It's the only one that looks like that. Uh, okay, yeah, put it up there. That makes sense. Uh, the shutter. Uh, that big old honky jonky goes right here. Uh, this thingy goes where? Goes right here. If it could get into place. Uh, that one goes right in here. Uh, this goes down in the bottom left. This one goes right underneath the shutter. And then uh, two more. That one this little tiny thing goes right here. And this one goes right here. Congratulations! You repaired the camera. Now you can take photos. Use the camera to find hidden puzzles all over the place. Jesus Christ. When walking in certain locations, a camera icon will appear on screen. When it does, tap the icon to snap a photo of the area. Photos you've taken can be viewed in the album in the professor's trunk. While viewing the album, tap any of your photos to, pay a photo, to play a photo hunt minigame. Your goal is to spot the differences between the touch screen and the photo of the real one. What? The actual location is shown on the top screen. Tap any suspicious locations to place a circle out on them, then tap here to submit your answer. If you answer correctly, the area selected will be marked with an icon. Each photo has three elements that are slightly different from those of the actual location. When you find all three in a single location, visit the area where you took the photo. If you try tapping on these places that were funny in the photo, who knows what you might find? So basically, this is just like a roundabout way of showing you where all the hidden puzzles are. But we need to take a picture of the nine areas first to see if we found the hidden puzzle there or not. I guess we're going to be doing some side quests before heading into the final chapter. So, I apologize for that being kind of uh, dumb, but let's see what we could do. First one, 
I'm just gonna go ahead and cut around to all these different locations and see what we can find. Hey, the hooker wants some tea. Let's give it to her. Are you quite all right, madam? You look a bit fatigued. I guess I have to read her lines. Oh, there I go again, spacing out. Sorry, I just feeling run down. And thirsty. Uh, her name's Ilyana in the U.S., but her name is something else. I think it's Avera in the U.K. version. Business is usually pretty slow at this hour. Maybe I should take a break or something. Your job must be very taxi. Make sure to schedule in some time to recuperate. Tee hee hee. Oh, it's so nice of you to worry about me, Mr. Tall, dark and handsome. You're right, though. I need to schedule some Eileen Ailana time. If you like, I think we could fix some, fix you some tea. How does that sound to you? Oh, that sounds wonderful. Tee hee hee. If you really want to thrill this girl, make something refreshing and sweet. Since you're so sweet, I'm sure you'll have no problem whipping something up that matches. I think we might be able to make something that fits the bill. Let's see. Number two, the Oasis Berry. Oh, no, that is nice. You sure know your way around a teapot, sugar. There have been some new faces here in town recently, but none of them are as nice as yours, tea. In fact, just a little while ago, an older gentleman came to town with a box all studded with gems. Looks wise, he didn't hold a candle to you, of course, but he was pretty cute in his own way. Now if you two ever get tired from running around, stop in and say hi, you hear? Tee hee hee. Are you talking about Don Paolo with the fruit? Okay, that's what you're into. Hey, Sammy has a puzzle for us. Hey there, guys. Getting close to finding out what you're looking for. Things are coming along nicely. Thank you for asking. Oh, but Sammy, as the conductor, is it all right for you to be away from the train like this? Man, forget that train. Even if I care, today's supposed to be my day off. But here I am. First I get sent off after the Elysian box, and now I'm accused of murder? It's total drag. Sammy Thunder's no murderer, man. After all the craziness, it's definitely time to chill out with a puzzle. Here, check it out. Chilling out with your puzzles in the schoolyard. Number 67, Sammy's Work Week. Uh, in the UK version, it's called Sammy's Working Week. Again, why do they do these changes? I don't know. So let's say today's my day off. If yesterday wasn't also a day off, then I'm off again tomorrow. If on the other hand, I was off yesterday, then tomorrow I'll have to work. Say I worked today, bummer. If I didn't work two days before today, I'd have had, I'd have to head to work tomorrow. But if I did work two days ago, I'm off tomorrow. Yow! Assuming a 365-day year and ignoring weekends and holidays, use what Sammy said to figure out how many days he worked in a year. And this part wasn't supposed to be read in his voice. He has a heart-shaped belt. Wow, and he's showing his midriff. Hit number one. Sammy's work and rush schedules uh, repeats. Uh, in itself every five days. Hint number two. Sammy schedules a cycle that consists of three days on the job followed by two days of downtime. Hint number three. Sammy works three-fifths of the days in this year. With, the f with that fact under your belt, you should be able to find the answer you're using a simple calculation. The solution is that Sammy works 219 days in a year. It's a two and a one and a nine. And hey, it actually recognized the one on the first try this time. Consider this puzzle solved. Ha! Huh, wonderful! Score! Sammy's lengthy and convoluted explanation. Man, oh Jesus Christ, a lot of... That's a really pretty lengthy and convoluted explanation. It's a pretty sweet deal he's got going on. Nice answer, man. It was so sweet, it makes me want to hit a high no. Yo! I'm getting tired. You know, the boss is a pretty lucky guy. I mean, the dude owns his own train. And here we are out in the middle of nowhere searching for some old guy's loot. Don't get me wrong, some moolah would have been sweet, but sometimes the boss could be real greedy. And that's it for him. This lady has been completely useless this entire game. Does she ever give us a puzzle? Uh, but whatever, our first thing that we're going to look for is in the hotel. Uh, do we... How do we do this? Do we use the camera? Let's have a picture to view it. 
but we can't take a photo. Uh, do we go upwards, perhaps? Uh, yep, the camera icon's right here. Taking a photo of this location. Something about it seems a bit off. Examine the photos you just took using the camera minigame in the trunk. Uh, I'm gonna go to all the locations first before just examining them all. So, I'm gonna... Should I do that? Eh, whatever, we'll do them all right here, I guess. Uh, there are three differences. Photograph number one, hotel room. So we just gotta find three differences. No hints allowed. Uh, do I just gotta, like, tap it? Uh, so that's the first one. There's two bottles on the counter right there. Second one is the doorknob. It's, uh, mirrored on this image. And the third one is this lamp that is, oh wait, here. Here goes. Oh god, I had to do it each individual time. The first difference in this photo, why can't I just tap all three of them at the same time? Or like, why can't I create three circles? So there's the doorknob. Just leave it to me. What? Well, I'm stumped. Uh, no, it was. There was a difference there. At least I'm not losing pick rats but... Here goes. Okay, now it magically worked. Cool. Piece of cake. And then the final one is right here. Right here. Consider this puzzle. <laughs> I like how Layton steals the thunder right at the end. Huh, wonderful. So now it tells you that there is a hidden puzzle right in this location. Okay, so I guess let's go that way and up and leave right now. Because that would have been annoying to come all the way back. Uh, examine this. There is a hidden puzzle. Maybe they only appear after we... Uh, this puzzle tried to hide from me, but I found it. Puzzle number 114, fair comp compensation. Hey, it's the mustache dude again. Three houses face a single common field. The heads of three house... Uh, these three houses, A, B, and C, decide to work together to seed the field. Unfortunately, C injures himself right before work starts, so A and B do all the work together. To send to seed the entire field, a work A must work five days and A works five I can't read, what the fruit? A works five days and B works four. Feeling guilty, C decides to pay A and B for doing his part of the job. To thank them, C pays them a total of nine coins dividing up according to how much work each person did. Can you figure out how many coins A and B received? Hint number one. It's tempting to think that the answer is to pay each man a coin for each day he worked, resulting in a total of five coins for A and four coins for B. But then that wouldn't be much of a puzzle, would it? Remember, the original agreement was that each man would do equal share of work. Hint number two. Simply put, A and B are getting paid for doing the work C was supposed to do. When considering your answer, don't factor in the days A and B were working, were supposed to work according to the original agreement. Hint number three. The coins should be distributed based on the number of days each person worked to cover the three days C was supposed to have worked. A did two days, B did one. So the solution is that A would receive six coins and B would receive three. Consider this puzzle solved. And there we have it. Smart. Cool. A lot of text. Not gonna read it. Oh boy, this is probably gonna be a really long episode, but I wanna see if I can get all these uh, camera bits done and over with. Hopefully some of them are ones that we've already gotten. I'm not sure if that's the case though. And this guy wants tea. Uh, he is... Krantz. Let's see if we could... Curb his appetite. Uh, he wants number five. Okay. This is Rumba number five. Give that to him. And there you go. You got anything new for us? Uh, Duke Henson would visit our hotel often and no one spread ridiculous rumors about vampires. There were simpler times, but when... Uh, you look what gold did to the people here. 
Let's just say I prefer those times in the past to now. In the end, greed consumed all. Both of you guys want tea? Okay. Took long enough. Others, oh, you guys, I'm out of town, I'm alright. Okay, whatever, give us, give me your stinking tea. Uh, his name's Derby. More like Derpy. Uh. Oh, wow, his, oh, I know, there's just the name is different. Give him the Belt Classic in the US version, but the Citrus Classic in the UK version. There you go. A her her. Wow, okay. It's the stuff. I gotta tell you, classes are the best. Let's go for tea, too. Well, the wire under the deals to spill the beans. How do you tell outsiders from natives here? Oh, that's easy as a pudding. Just get up real close and give them a sniff. What? I see. That's creepy. Okay, cool. That was it. I love bell tar fruit and pudding. Okay, whatever. I'm just gonna go ahead and give you a tea. His name is Niles. Uh, let's see. He wants number nine, the Radiance Blend. Uh, give me that one. That tea was really good. And now we're on our merry way to the dump. Look at this photograph. Every time I look, it makes me laugh. I wish I knew all the words so I could do a cover while I'm going through all these puzzles. And what the heck is on Layton's head? This is where I grew up. Uh, I don't know. To test my theory. How do they decide who does and doesn't do? Maybe it's completely random. I don't know. Wonderful. So we got the different colored sheet, the on and off window, and then finally, uh, this is a soda can, and the other one up there is a wine bottle. Cool. Here goes. Uh oh, god! This unlocks a sliding puzzle. Maybe we found this one already. But all the differences in this photo. So this one says that we solved it. This one says it's right down there. Okay. Let's get it over with. Oh goody, a hidden puzzle. Hooray. 118, garbage disposal. Sliding puzzle, get to it. Oy. Let's go ahead and speed this up because this video is probably going to be already long as it is. Did one more move than I needed to, but whatever, I've stopped caring. And there we have it. Ah, uh, spick and span, do your part to keep the town clean. At least it didn't remind me of how many spaces I could have done it in. That puzzle hurt my head. All these puzzles hurt my head, Luke. First one is the open trash can. Here goes. Really wish we didn't have to see that every single time. Piece of cake. Second one is the porch. It's a lot taller in the top picture. Or maybe it might be the bottom picture, depending on... Just yeah, because I have the bottom can... picture as the big screen in... I have the bottom screen as the big easy. square on the DS layout for late in game specifically, and then... The top screen is the tiny one in the bottom right. Uh, the third one is this one has three windows and the top has two. Hmm. Let's see if this works. Layton's apprentice strikes again. Getting all these puzzles in. Uh, it's right there. So let's 
go ahead and examiones. Well, look at that. It's a hidden puzzle. Puzzle number 124, UFOs spotted. One of them looks like Peridot. Four UFOs were spotted in the night sky. It looks like there are four distinct shapes floating in the sky, but each of these is actually made up of four identical parts. Which of the following is the base part used to make all these shapes? Hit number one. Use the memo function to try creating the UFOs using each possible part. Hit number two. Try to make the UFO on the right with each of the parts. That's good. That's a good place to start. And hit number three. Each UFO has a certain kind of symmetry. I'm a master of ID UFO from Mario Party 5, so obviously I know that the answer is C. You know, that has nothing to do with this. Let's see if this other than just having the word UFO in the title. Mages, apprentice strikes again. Lance right. Uh, that one was a toughie, apparently. Up next, we have to go all the way to the museum, so I'll meet you guys there.